explain steps to perform table partitioning and what are the best practices to do so. Um, there are three steps to perform uh, table partitioning and I have written down right here for you. The first step is create a partition function. Second step is create a partition scheme. The third step is once the function and scheme are created then you can go ahead and create a, ta a partition in that table. When you create a par uh, partition uh, function what you do is how the table is being partitioned. Um, how many partition you wanted to create on that table. That's what you defined in function um, and uh, also what uh, column that you uh, selected to partition that particular table. When we talk about uh, create a partition scheme, what, what we're talking about is that uh, uh, it maps the partition created by partition function to set of file groups. We need to create uh, a file group uh, a separate file group needs uh, to be created for each partition. That's what my my view is. That's what my best practices is. And um, a partition scheme can only use one partition function, even though that function can be used by other partition scheme. So uh, just just so that you know quickly. So uh, before that you uh, uh, create partition scheme, uh, you need to create uh, file groups so that you can map those file groups to the partition scheme. The third is once you're uh, done with the above two uh, parts, then you can go ahead and create the partition of that table. Now the best practices, as far as uh, best pra practices go, uh, first thing that I would always tell you that uh, choose a good uh, uh, candidate column uh, to partition the table. Uh, that's always a good practice. Let's say that uh, if you're international, you can choose country um, as your uh, partition. If you're domestic, you can choose the region. Region would be a good candidate column. If you don't have all, all that and you have the date column, that would be a best candidate for the table partitioning column. And second best practices. Um, uh, second best practice is always keep empty partition at both ends of the partition. Once you go through this process, you will understand uh, a bit more detail of what partition split is and what partition merges. But I would say uh, this is the best practice, and um, it comes from Microsoft, and it's a pretty good practice that you have to. Uh, we we should always. Uh, do the empty partition at both ends of partition range because range is when you define the range is defined in partition function so always keep two empty partition at both ends of the uh, uh, partition range because you don't want your data end up in any other partition where you, uh, other than what what you your intention is so if that happens then you will run into issue so this is this was the quick overview of uh, uh, performing table partitioning process and uh, a couple best practices. I hope this answer helps.